Okay. Hello, everybody. My name is Walter Opozinski. I am a forest recreation specialist for the Department of Forest Parks and Recreation, and I'm excited to be doing this presentation uh, because it is um, it's about what I do. I'm going to be telling you what I do, and I really enjoy what I do. Um, so I'm very happy to talk about it. And <laughs> it's been interesting. I'm, I'm, I'm glad I have the opportunity to do this. Originally, when talking with the good folks at VINS, it was going to be an in-person presentation. But we all know that we live in this new situation with COVID-19. And uh, I'm glad we're still able to do the presentation. We're adapting to the situation as opposed to just canceling the opportunity. Uh, so I really appreciate that. And it's also given me the opportunity to learn about these new platforms. So um, I'm using uh, Teams, and there's so many uh, different platforms to record with out there. And this is probably take number seven as I'm learning uh, how to incorporate PowerPoint and videos. Uh, but this is, this is a great learning opportunity for me. So back to the presentation. I'm going to work you through a PowerPoint that explains what I do, and I'm going to categorize it as um, office items and field items. Um, the thing about my position with the Department of Forest Parks and Rec is it has a, a beautiful blend of office work and field work. Um, so I want to relay that information. I'm going to preface it with some information about the Department of Forest Parks and Recreation in general, so you understand um, how a lot of different moving pieces come together to support uh, state land management. Um, we're gonna also, I'm gonna plug in a little video at the end. That's a little five minute video of just some footage I've been taking <coughs> out in the field this year because I wanted you to see um, what I do on the ground. Um, it's just a, a sample of a couple of things. Um, one of the most important, I think, is just maintaining our erosion control out on trails and then clearing blowdowns. So with that said, let's get into the PowerPoint. Let me just share my screen. Okay. And what is a forest recreation specialist? Uh, hopefully at the end of this presentation, you'll have a good idea about what that is and you'll be able to answer this question. Um, to give you an overview, I work for Department of Forest Parks and Rec. I'll, I'll call it FPR from here on out. You'll notice we use a lot of acronyms. Um, <clears throat> but it has these brother, sister, these sibling departments all housed within the Agency of Natural Resources, which we refer to as a &R. So we've got Fish and Wildlife and we've got the Vermont Department of Environmental Conservation. And uh, right here you can see I've just pulled some mission statement information from each department and have provided the websites and I highly recommend if you're interested in land management and you're interested in how people take care of the the public state land in Vermont if you go to these websites you'll be introduced to a wealth of information and, and, and data um, it's amazing how deep these websites go and how much information is housed on them um, and I highly recommend checking them out. Uh, but this really is, uh, you know, granted, like everything evolves over time. Um, but this system here, it creates uh, really good expertise within the state of Vermont to properly manage the many aspects of our state land. And I think one of the most beautiful representations of how these departments work together is the district stewardship team 
and the processes that we go through to have long range management plans to guide how we manage state land. And I'll be talking a little bit more about that. Um, but on the district stewardship team, there's representatives from each department um, that review projects on state land and ensure that we're, we've got good process, that we're, we have good balance and, uh, and, and we're thinking about wildlife, we're thinking about wetlands, we're thinking about the timber stand, we're thinking about sensitive areas, um, we're thinking about the public's need to get out on those uh, public lands. Um, so it's a really interesting process and I highly recommend folks check out all these these three websites here. Um, the Department of Forest Parks and Rec manages over 350,000 acres of land. So that is a good percentage. Um, I think it's like maybe 6 million acres in Vermont. Um, that, that probably should get fact checked and I'd almost uh, want to do a Google uh, search on that right now, but I feel like that is um, uh, it is a statistic that stands out to me as something I remember. Um, but if you look at this map, you'll see um, this isn't all state land. There's also federal land as well. You know, we have the Green Mountain National Forest um, and then, you know, everything that is in the dark green is state land, light green is state parks. Um, we have wildlife management areas. Um, so uh, it's, um, it's a good visual. And the people that you see in this panoramic, uh, this, this photo was taken in a couple of years ago at a, a, a meeting, a little get together that um, FPR had. And, and these are the people that um, are tasked with managing the 350,000 acres of land. Granted, they do not um, do every aspect themselves. They couldn't. There's just not enough people. Um, so you, as we go on in this presentation, I, I really want to stress that um, it's it comes down to partners, 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 and um, contracted projects um, and volunteers and interns. Um, it really takes a village to to properly take care of the uh, the state's land. Um, but in this slide, you can see um, the district that I work in is District Four. The position I have, the, the Forest Rec Specialist, uh, Forest Recreation Specialist, uh, it, is kind of unique. There's two other um, similar positions out there, one in District 3, one in District 5. And um, I do think, like, I, I really enjoy uh, District 4, but I will say every district is uh, has its beautiful features, distinguishing features, and you just can't go wrong with the state of Vermont in general. But I included some of the, the logos from the partner organizations that, that I work with. Um, you'll see, I mean, this is a sample. This isn't comprehensive. Um, I, was, I was thinking about really the projects I've had in the past uh, year or so um, and, and the partners I've worked with. And, and um, you know, these are all organizations. Every user group pretty much has a, its organization um, that is the, the point organization, and a lot of them are set up with chapters so that they can be more effective at the local and regional level. Um, really good examples, I would say, like, you know, the Vermont Association of Snow Travelers, they've got 5,000 miles of trail. I don't even know how many chapters they have, um, but uh, when, you're, when you're dealing with that amount of resource to manage you do need that type of structure and they place these organizations these partners play such a huge role in helping provide good resource to the public um, so I, I just can't stress enough the importance of partnerships um, and that's a big part of what i do is work as a liaison um, of fpr to our partners um, to help support their efforts and when it comes down, you know, to the office piece, 
uh, data collection and management. Um, you know, data collection may not necessarily be entirely officey, uh, but it is. Um, it, it is uh, it does feed that data processing, um, consolidating information, uh, getting good dashboard data. Like what you see here is is some dashboard data, where it takes this large volume of raw data and gives us information that we can use for planning. Um, this gives us direction, uh, not only on uh, management decisions, on what we what we should do at a location, but it also helps us be efficient and prioritize because we we um, we don't have a ton of resources and we really have to be uh, focused uh, and, and, and confident that what we're doing any given year are the projects that absolutely uh, need to be done. And there's reasoning behind that. And this data that we collect um, is very important and, and helps us feel confident in those decisions. Um, you can see right this right here is a uh, a trail sensor. There's, there's a trail sensor in that post, and, and we had a metal sensor here, so we could um, figure out how many pedestrians are walking on the trail and how many uh, bikes are using the trail. And it just gives us some some good data to work with for, uh, like I said, prioritizing projects, but also um, when we seek funding, we've got good data to prove that um, where the money's going will be impactful to support public use. Um, that data feeds the planning piece. So I look at it, there's there's different, um, I guess, phases of planning or degrees of planning. Um, there's master planning and long range management planning and, and they, they, they also they, they both um, support each other uh, but right here are some samples um, recently uh, well they're from B Bingham Falls but recently uh, we went out to contract to create a master plan for Bingham Falls and we had um, a contracted company to help um, facilitate the process we had engineers involved uh, uh, to do all the the um, support the design work the uh, in the field design work uh, we had a professional trail builder um, involved um, just to give the uh, very best practices for trail construction. And part of the role I played was uh, helping pull together data to support that process. So usage data, um, trying to determine how many vehicles, uh, how big the parking lot should be um to to support the type of use that we have and a big part of what we do is going out to the public and, and explaining this information to the public because these are public lands um, so you can see here's a meeting that we did um, as part of that master planning process with bingham falls and and we're um we're giving information to the public and we're getting feedback um, so that we we um, are confident that we're on the right track um and, and we're not uh we're not missing anything and and we're uh um you know representing the uh the desires of the public um so now we're going to shift gears and then you know to me this is like i don't know it's the it's the reward for all the office work um, actually being being able to take care of the resource and and work with contractors and partners and the state trail crew um, to to physically um, care for this resource. And you'll see on the top left, that's the state trail crew. That was a project that we did recently out at the Elmore State Park Nature Trail, uh, replacing a bridge that, um, that was on, on the verge of rotting. Um, and, and then I've got three photos um, of Perry Hill, which is in Waterbury, big mountain bike area, 10 miles of trail, uh, but the, we worked with the state trail crew to do an erosion control project. Um, and then you can see uh, we're replacing a gate. Anybody that's ever been to Perry Hill, you, you, you go through this tunnel that goes under the highway to access the trail network. And there's a gate at the end of the tunnel that just keep, keep vehicles out of there. And um, it was uh, the, the gate was getting rusty and, and, and ratty. It was hard for people to get around. So 
Uh, we work to replace that. And then all the way over um, the larger picture there is uh, the Vermont Youth Conservation Corps. Um, so all female crew from, I think, two years ago, maybe 2018, uh, over at Spruce Mountain uh, doing a lot of rock work. And um, the it was a tough project, three weeks. They worked with the state trail crew. The first week, I remember, it was just downpours and muddy. And uh, it was a tough week, but everybody stuck with it and did some really nice work for the public. Um, and then, you know, one part of field work is as much as you plan, when you're dealing with a dynamic situation like like land and rivers, um, some things crop up that you just wouldn't expect. And this is uh, a major event that we had uh, last year in the springtime. Um, this out at Cotton Brook, which is a uh, feeder stream to Waterbury Reservoir. And it's something that we've identified in uh, the long range management plan, Mount Mansfield State Forest, uh, an area that we called highly sensitive due to the uh, highly erosive clay bluffs. And um, sure enough, uh, there was a major landslide out there that took out a section of trail and um, it was about 13 acres in size and that ended up um, causing us a lot of uh, a lot of work just to close down the the, the trail have it evaluated by geologists determine if um, the nearby trails were safe um, so you just never know and, and these things are always interesting for sure um, that is the the end of the uh, the PowerPoint, um, I just wanted to show you quickly, you know, going back to the the office -y things um, where some of our data goes. Um, this is a, a dashboard that we have where the, the usage data that we collect with um, infrared sensors and metal sensors uh, helps us see how many people actually use the trails. And these are um, all the sensors that we have out or have had deployed on state land. And you can see we get these really quick outputs um, just to just to understand, you know, how much use is occurring out there. And, and, and we're really just just beginning to uh, collect this valuable data, um, just just getting the uh, the equipment for it and, and getting our, our data process or data collection processing and management systems down um, but it's it's just so eye-opening and, and, and important information to have i mean right here you know you can see i think one of our top trails is probably bingham falls that gets almost seventeen thousand people in the month of july that's uh that's pretty intense um it's a lot of activity um the other the other thing that we've been doing quite a bit and this is a combination of office and field uh, we go out in the field, uh, we have uh, the Esri Collector app, and this is where um, GIS gets in, which I highly recommend anybody that's looking into getting into um, outdoor uh, land management, um, really any anything that's like outdoors, um, GIS, get good at mapping. Uh, that's not going away. That's not going anywhere. And, and, and there's so much... Um, technology going into it that's just getting more interesting more more information um, easier to use um, so i can only imagine where it's going to be in five ten years but we go out with our phones and we record all of these data points i'll show you the worcester range because that's where we're doing information right now um, but as you zoom in you know we'll go over to the uh, the waterbury trail it goes up to mount hunger so the, all of these points were recorded in the field and we've got data that tells us our, that's a water bar. Um, you can see the photo of the water bar. It's in fair condition. Um, sometimes we take some notes. Um, so there you can see that's just a, uh, uh, a rock faced uh, earthen berm water bar. That's erosion control. If we didn't have these in, um, we would be losing a lot of soil and the trails would just get totally blown out. Um, so 
you know, I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of these dots are water bars. Um, uh, armored trail, you know, we can take a look at this one. So there we have um, some stepping stones. Um, so, you know, there are, there's so much infrastructure out there and we are, I don't know, maybe 70% done with cataloging all of it on state land. And once we get to that point, I mean, we're going to be able to really say how much value is out there and how much work is out there that needs to be done. Um, so pretty amazing, um, you know, the data that we have at our fingertips, but it does take the time to collect it. Um, and, and, you know, again, this is the partnership contractors piece. Like I can't go out and collect all of these um, on all of the state lands in my district. Um, I mean, on state lands, we probably have almost 1500 miles trail. Um, so for this particular project, we, we contracted with the Vermont Youth Conservation Corps crew, which um, which I'll be talking about towards the, well, the very end of this project uh, or this presentation. Um, so we had a, a crew of three go out and uh, collect all of this data and help with our, our user surveys and um, uh, installing the infrared sensors. Uh, so we just uh, we wouldn't be able to do everything without having that kind of those kind of partnerships. Um, you know, but with that said, let me. Let me just show this video quickly here. I think it's about five minutes, a little sample of just being out in the field. All right. Well, it's the last day of April. I'm on Elmore Fire Tower Trail. And this is just a, I've got a great example here of a, a water bar, rock water bar, that um, <laughs> is full of leaves. You can see it's getting pretty, pretty well plugged up. And it gets to the point where it's so full that any water coming down to jump it, that becomes an issue where we start losing more trail soil. And you can see, up the trail here, um, there's definitely a place. So I got some clues. There's a little sleuthing that you need to do. So when we look at the outlet, look at all that sediment on top of the leaves. That's all. That's all sediment that was transplanted from up trail. All right. Well, I am just up hill from the last place that we uh, spoke at and we got a really you know this is a working water bar right here you can see it's probably draining um, some seep and it's taking the surficial shed off of the trail tread and it's doing its job this side we have water this side we don't although because there's so much debris that's building up you can see if we get if we get a real good soaker, see this area right here with this leaf, all the leaf that's put, raising the elevation, that's going to go through. And that's probably what's happening. Um, you know, these uh, the transitions we get between seasons, we can see some good rainfall. And the way things have been going, it's become more frequent to get gigantic soakers every once in a while. So. When we're looking at cleaning this water bar, it's good to start up in the side ditch and get it good and clean. And what it is, is it's a matter of taking the all the leaf matter and taking it out in such a way that it's, you don't want to put it back up here because it's gonna it could come right back in. Take it away from the ditch in such a way that it's not gonna it's not going to refill. And you'll see that flow is starting to go a little better. So I'll give you a before and after. You can see it's already flowing a little better. The uh, the water level that was like next to the top of this rock has already dropped. So it's going to be, you know, if we get a rain event, there's a little more wiggle room there for that, that water bar to catch and redirect. And I'm just going to bring this, clean the ditch, Cleaning the outflow is very important because otherwise you can just get a build a dam and have your water come back up 
and um, plug up the, the water bar again and overflow, spill over. So I'm gonna clean this all the way out and um, we'll show you the end product. Okay, so all finished here. You can see it's um, <clears throat> cleaned out and I don't have every single leaf. I mean, you gotta draw a line somewhere because there's an awful lot of water bars clean out there. But as you can see, it's flowing a lot better. Coming right down through. All that leaf matter I bought down and I dispersed it downhill. And then we got a nice channel for the water to flow through. So there you go. That's a clean water bar. And probably took me, oh, well, maybe three, four now minutes. It takes me outside. On a nice uh, spring day, a little bit of snow on the ground. Clear blowdowns. This is a mountain bike trail at Little River State Park. And mountain bikes certainly need blowdowns removed from the trail just for safety reasons. So there's a little bit of uh, a little bit of what we do in the field. Um, granted, you know, there's a lot more that goes on with, with trail projects, but you know, that's all part of it. You know, maybe cleaning water bars isn't the most exciting thing, um, but it's important. And uh, there's so many of them out there. I think currently with our inventory, and granted, we're, we, don't, we haven't done every trail, but there's uh, 2,500 plus water bars at this point that we've recorded with that Esri Collector app. And um, they're all, uh, every single one is important to maintain. Um, so that's the presentation about what I do. Um, I, I do wanna give a little background about how I got into this, um, just in case um, anybody is interested in going down a similar uh, path, no pun intended. But um, for me, I wasn't necessarily, I, I, I was pretty confident I was going to do something with the outdoors, um, even, you know, as young as being in middle school. Uh, I was just always outdoors on trails uh, to begin with. So I, I think if if, um, if you are, that's a good in indicator that maybe, you know, your, your psyche is uh, orientated towards uh, outdoor work. It's just probably, if you're out there, um, on your own accord and it's something that you enjoy uh that's probably one of the main ingredients uh, that you need to get into the outdoor industry but uh, i will say i went to college at, at unity college over in maine uh, planning to uh, uh, be a, an educator and after college i was at a place um, called the common ground fair it's a uh, it's maine organic growers Maine Organic Farmers Growers Association, MOFCA, an organization over in Maine, um, puts on a big fair. There's a lot of good food and uh, booths and tents. And one of the tents, there was a, a table that the Maine Conservation Corps had, and they were recruiting people to help finish up projects. And at the time, um, I was getting ready to go out to Montana to work on a ranch, actually. And somebody came up to me from the table and pointed at me and said, you got a job. And I told them I already had one. They explained the situation and I thought it would be a good opportunity to make some gas money to get out to Montana. And next thing I know, I was with the Maine Conservation Corps for two and a half years and I got heavily trained in uh, trail design, construction and maintenance techniques. And with all of the training that I received, I had a hard time um, just wasting all of that effort to, to, to learn this trade. 
and that was what got me into the world of recreation trails and land management and started this whole new uh, track um, in my life. Um, so you never know when that's going to occur. And I just recommend that folks, uh, you know, kind of listen to listen to their hearts and follow, sniff that out. Um, but um, some ways, if you do want to get into, if you want to make that active decision to get into outdoor land management through recreation trails, I recommend becoming a volunteer. You can do that through all those partner organizations that I mentioned, uh, Green Mountain Club, Catamount Trail, um, Northern Forest Canoe Trail, uh, Vermont Association of Snow Travelers, Vermont um, ATV Sportsman's Association, um, the list goes on. Anything that you like to do outdoors, I guarantee there's an organization that is craving volunteer time. So that'd be a great opportunity. Um, you can also, I think um, this presentation is focused on um, middle school age. You can um, uh, likely um, join a Vermont Youth Conservation Corps crew uh, sometime in the near future. Uh, I know right now because of COVID, I don't think they have a lot of crews um, right now, uh, but I guarantee um, as creative as the organization is and adaptable, they'll be figuring out a way soon. And, um, and hopefully, uh, you know, the, the pandemic dies down ASAP. Uh, but an organization to check out, you can go to their website, and um, and that's just a good way to, you know, take volunteering on a trail and, and go to a place where you can get more training. And, and, and you know, that's just a good next step in, in, in climbing the ladder there. Uh, uh, but I'm also, you know, if you want more details or you want to um, talk about the uh, recreation trails world outdoor industry um, feel free to reach out um, not sure if my uh, email will be uh, on this powerpoint uh, slideshow uh, video uh, but it's walter dot and i'll spell that for you o p u s z y n s k i at Vermont, all spelled out, dot G-O-V. And, um, and that's what I got for you. Um, it's fun telling you about what I do. And I um, hope you enjoyed it or got something from it. Um, so, yeah, get outside. Stay healthy. All right. <laughs>